everyone. So the reason we put match funding into this presentation, it may be something that some of you are familiar with, but it's something that we are discussing with Sovereign. They haven't done match funding yet. But one of the things that the organisation, the charity that, that owns the Good Exchange does, Green and Trust, is they offer a lot of match funding grants. And we had a quick look at the statistics for one of their match funding grants called Trust Top Up. And we found that 77% of the charities that got given Trust Top Up of £5,000 raised less than half of the match funding against that in a 12-month period. And only 10% of those organisations match the total 5,000. So what that means is that, that funders are giving out match funding grants to charities and they're not actually getting the money. Because how match funding works is that a funder offers a defined grant to a project over a defined period, but that charity gets the money when they match that money pound for pound. So you either match it from donations or from other fundraising activities that you do, or in some cases at funder discretion, they will match with grants from other funders or from, say, businesses. So the whole thing about match funding is it's use it or lose it. So if the, if the charity a grant giving organisation gives you match funding, you have to match that money to get it. So a little diagram here of how it works. So if Sovereign offered a £5,000 match funding grant to a project to be matched £1 for £1, every £1 that was donated would then become £2. So for example, if your fundraising organisation raised £5,000 from donations, fundraising and other grants, you would actually get £10,000. So £5,000 from the funder, £5,000 from your own activity. And that's why funding at fundraising match funding is such an exciting prospect for charities. A double match funding initiative to try and help um, some fundraising organisations attract more um, public donations and fundraisers to support them. So back in July, back in the summer, they awarded up to £100,000 in double match funding for 24 hours only to 10 charity finalists. And, and the results surprised everybody. We managed to help those 10 finalists raise over £181,000 on the day with Green and Trust awarding £2 for every £1 donated. Um, and it just shows the amazing results that can be achieved if you secure much funding from a funder and use the Good Exchange to help fundraising organisations attract public donations to support your fundraising appeal. So all of this was achieved over a 24-hour period from one minute past midnight on Friday the 24th of July to one minute to midnight the following night. Eight out of the ten finalists reached their £5,000 donations target on the day, which meant that they got an additional £10,000 in match funding grants from Green and Trust. And some raised considerably more, as you'll hear about shortly. So these were the finalists though, who took part, and they all had to have a live application on the Good Exchange. COVID safe fundraising activities. Uh, organised in the week preceding and on the day itself, and they had to have a social media presence for their organisation. But how were they so successful? Well, apart from the support that they received from Green and Trust and the Good Exchange, so we provided toolkits and guides, and we provided each of the 10 finalists with, um, with a mentor to support them during the week and on the day itself. They helped themselves by creating social media campaigns and they communicated those regularly throughout their partners and their support and networks. So here's just one creative fundraising example of how the finalists use Facebook to drum up donations. Can you change the slide, please, Mina? So Jane Tomlinson climbed her stairs 247 times to raise funds for the hydrotherapy pool at the Special Educational Needs Castle School which was posted live on Facebook by her son. So as you can see, there are lots of fantastic examples of how the other 10 finalists use social media effectively to signpost donors to their fundraising appeals on the Good Exchange and also through direct links from their websites. 
Anyway, that's enough from me. Let's hear from the few of the finalists themselves who can share their experience of double match day. So first of all, please can I introduce the clerk of East Dilsley Parish Council, in other words. Hi everybody, thank you very much for having me on here. Um, so I'm the clerk to the Parish Council and we had a, um, we had a playground that was in very sad need of being revamped and we contacted the Good Exchange for help um, with raising funds for this project. Um, so we were really lucky to be one of the 10 finalists for um, Double Matched Funding Day on the 24th of July. And because we already had Trust Top Up as well, we had a chance to make the £15,000 on that one day. Um, we started to get our thinking caps on and um, we knew that we had to do something special on that day. It was really important that we had one thing that our whole community could engage with um, that would be live and we could put on all of our social media feeds to encourage people to donate. Um, so me, for my sins, decided to run 24.7 kilometres on a treadmill to generate the maximum number of donations we needed. Um, I chose that number because of the date and it really helped um, kind of bring up the excitement um, and uh, up for, in the run up to the day. Um, social media, as Julian's mentioned, was really important for us. It was our biggest pull. Um, obviously being able to donate online through the Good Exchange was um, a really big draw for us. And it was obviously trusted and well protected. So our villagers had confidence in it. We used Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube um, to rally awareness, um, share videos, live stream the run. And, you know, we took screenshots of the donations increasing to get, encourage people to carry on and help us reach our target. Um, and, it, and it worked. That, that engagement with people on social media was absolutely incredible. And we did get over £15,000 for um, our new playground equipment. So we were absolutely thrilled. Um, so this slide just gives you a little bit of uh, an example of the things we did. Um, so using Canva, which um, they might talk about later on, we generated all these sort of <clears throat> visual aids for people, um, which was free for us to use. Um, we did regular countdown videos in the run up to uh, to the big day and posted those all over our socials to really um, get people excited. Um, started up an Instagram account, <clears throat> which was new for us, um, but we've managed to generate some excellent followings from that. Uh, so that all went really well. It was hard work for me as the person managing it, but um, it was really worth it in the end. Um, so, as I mentioned before, we did countdown videos. Um, the most important one we did was our day four, and um, that was because we really wanted to make sure that people understood that this was for the children. So we, um, we found Milo, who is a six-year-old boy that lives in our village, who loves the playground, um, but really, really wanted a climbing frame. And it's one thing we didn't have. So Milo's mum really kindly uh, filmed and gave us permission to use him in our video. Um, so you can view it on our YouTube channel. Um, go and have a look. We've added music and, and Milo talking. And it's just a really great way of bringing in the empathy um, for that video and generating people's interest. So a um, few things that we had to learn uh, in order to make this a success. We had to um, do something physical on the day to drive up the donation. So Challenge the Clerk was born. Um, we had to create vibrant, clear, eye-catching social media messages, which were really important to gain attention. We didn't want to just post it. We know it needed to be something bright and visual. And Canva was amazing to help me do that. Um, I can't not say how amazing the Good Exchange and the Greenham Trust were um, in the run-up before, during and after. They were absolutely amazing. Uh, Julian was my mentor and we had quite a few Zoom meetings just to chat about how this was going, give me ideas um, and they just helped us raise our campaign. And um, We had a hashtag that we all used and we could all share and retweet and, um, and follow each other and that, it was incredible the real big support we got. Um, 
all the tools, resources, and people you can find, just use them. Um, the challenge wasn't the run itself. Um, it was actually the, the, you know, the week running up to the campaign and the intensity for, for me to keep promoting this. Um, and really key for us was we realised we needed a hook. So our little story with Milo uh, was something that people in the village could relate to, um, feel empathy for his plight of not having a climbing frame. And that really helped when we um, donations started coming in. I think I just have one more slide. So yeah, we, we couldn't have done that without the Good Exchange or the Greenham Trust. So uh, I mean, a huge thank you to you and for all your support. Um, and so my advice to you thinking about doing this is just use everything they give you. Um, listen to everything they say, run your ideas past them, share everything you can on social media um, with them, you know, tag them. Um, put them in all your posts and they will share and retweet. Um, take every opportunity they, they give you and embrace it. It was a truly phenomenal day and um, we're so grateful and so is the village, so thank you. Thank you very much, Fenella. That was a, a brilliant run through of um, your experience of Double Match Day. And thank you so much for those kind words. So on to... Um, uh, the Watermill Theatre and Charlotte Stroud, the development officer from the Watermill, is going to share her experiences of uh, Double Match Day. So over to you, Charlotte. Thank you, Julian. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, so I'll just talk through um, some of the channels that we used um, in order to advertise Double Match Day. Um, this was a brilliant opportunity for us. As you may know, um, the arts industry and theatres have been heavily impacted by COVID-19. Um, on the 17th of March, we had just opened a new show. It was, I think, two performances in and we had to close um, everything completely. And that then led to a, a period of closure, which meant that we couldn't generate any um, ticket income or, or restaurant income. So it was a, a really uh, difficult challenge for us. So we had already launched our Act Now to help us act tomorrow appeal. Um, and this seemed like the, the perfect project to take forward with this opportunity that the Good Exchange and Greenham Trust presented to us um, with the double match funding. Um, it was a, a brilliant incentive for our supporters to be able to triple their impact. You know, if they were able to donate £10, that would then become £30 for the theatre and for our appeal. Um, so again, I just really like to uh, thank Greenham Trust and the Good Exchange for this opportunity. Um, so what did we do in order to advertise Double Match Day? Um, we, in the week preceding to Double Match Day, started to send out information about it to our mailing list. We sent out an e-flyer um, which had notice of the date and the activities and what was happening. Um, and we also started to use information internally on our email signatures to um, spread the word with our supporters, with our um, corporate contacts um, and other people that we were working with. So it was really brilliant. One sort of learning curve that we, um, we did have was that within 24 hours of us sending out that first email, we had already received over £700 worth of donations, which is absolutely amazing, um, but sadly not eligible for the double match funding because we still had a week to go until that date. So um, we just needed to, if we were going to do this again, try not to include perhaps some click through links. Um, we put those in for people to read about it, but it's just a way of, of making sure that we can uh, hold fire on those donations and, and get the, the maximum impact um, for them. Uh, next slide please, Marina. So social media was also something that we um, used heavily in order to uh, advertise the opportunity. So we had a daily countdown on Facebook and um, Instagram stories. Um, and we also used Twitter to retweet um, Greenham Trust and to spread the word. Um, it had a really good response. As you can see, um, our first Facebook countdown post had 48 shares amongst our followers. So people were really excited um, about this opportunity. With the, um, the Instagram stories, one thing that we sort of recognised is it's best to schedule these sorts of posts um, in advance at midnight because otherwise you get an overlap 
if you do it at nine o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning the next day, you'll have two running alongside each other. So that was just another little learning curve um, that we found. Next slide, please, Marina. Thank you. Um, so other opportunities in the summer, um, we had taken the plunge and opened a Riverside Cafe um, at the theatre. Um, we were using disposable menus um, for sort of additional safety. So that then presented an opportunity for us to attach some printed flyers um, to further up, up, advertise a double match day and that opportunity. Um, and we also turned that into a digital version and that was sent to specific contacts. So our sponsors, our corporate club members, um, colleagues, friends, volunteers, everybody um, who was already invested in, in the theatre and wanted to support us for them to then spread the word with friends and family and that really helped us um, to get the news out into the community. We were also uh, lucky enough to be opening um, some outdoor performances in the Watermore Gardens in the summer so having sent out information about that we were able to attach our double match day wording um, onto that information so really utilising all opportunities to get the word out there. Then on the day itself, we sent out another email. We updated our own website to include an event page to direct people through to the Good Exchange because obviously if somebody went onto our website to make a donation, that wouldn't be linked to the double match day opportunity. So having a clear journey to be able to direct people to the Good Exchange um, was something that we felt was really important. Um, again, we use social posts um, across all our channels um, and uh, we were really blown away actually by the support that we received. We had prepared a few other bits of, um, and pieces to go onto social media, but actually we received the um, £5,000 of funding from our supporters needed to access that maximum amount of £10,000 of double match funding by around 11 o'clock in the morning on that day. Um, we were really blown away by the support that we received and how invested people were in, in helping us to achieve that target. Um, and actually, overall, the event helped us to raise over £44,000 in one day. Um, that's including double match funding and gift aid, but that was a phenomenal amount for us to be able to raise um, and we wouldn't have been able to do it without that opportunity. Um, with everyone working remotely, we couldn't host a big fundraising event. This was really brilliant um, for us to be able to engage with our community and our supporters. Next slide, please, Marina. So in order to say thank you, um, we utilised the resources um, that the Good Exchange presented for us. Um, obviously, the people donating were donating on the Good Exchange, so we didn't have all of their details in the way that we usually would if they were making a donation through our website. So there's a comment section, that's the green box on the right. We were able to update um, with various comments as we were going through the day and to just add a thank you message um, as we were going along and, and really engage with our supporters in that way. Um, and when we had hit our target, um, we contacted Louise, who was our mentor at The Good Exchange, and she updated the top of our project page to be able to make it really clear um, and transparent for people that we had reached that target. Um, and we were very grateful to um, receive more donations, but just to make it clear that that double match funding um, maximum amount had been reached. And next slide, please. So we also then used um, emails and social channels to say thank you a few days later. We found that um, actually some more donations continued to, to trickle in. So it was a little bit tricky to confirm the overall total um, on the day. Um, so we did that a few days later. Um, and our project target, because we reached the overall project target, um, we did find that people were coming uh, online in the evening to make donations and, and unfortunately that had been closed because um, the Good Exchange doesn't let you exceed your target. So it's good to have a plan B of being able to either direct people to another project on the Good Exchange, um, another appeal or, or onto your website. So just to be aware of that if you are thinking about setting up a fundraising campaign. Um, and I'm pleased to say that thanks to 
the support of people on double match day and our supporters over the last few months we have recently reopened the water mill for a socially distant season that opened last week um, unfortunately we are running at a much smaller capacity we're only able to sell 37% of our seats and we usually aim for 89% to break even but to be in this position now and to be able to reopen um, is a real blessing um, and we're really grateful and appreciative for this opportunity so thank you. Thank you Charlotte for that really really insightful and comprehensive review. It's worth just mentioning quickly that um, upgrades to our uh, donor service via the Good Exchange will include the opportunity for donors to opt in and share their details. Um, fundraising organisations will share the, will be able to access the reports of um, opted in donors. So hopefully that will be able to help um, you all as you um, continue to fundraise through the platform. Thank you, Charlotte. And last but certainly not least, please can I introduce Helen Milroy, who's the Director of Operations at Newbury Cancer Care to talk about their experience of Double Match Day. Over to you, Helen. Thank you, Julian. Hello, everyone. Um, my role as Director of Operations for Newbury Cancer Care is, is a bit of a jack of all trades. I'm front of house, I speak to donors, I speak to patients, I speak to relatives. Um, fundraising is not one of our fortes and we're not big on going and rattling tins down the high street. We don't do a lot, we don't sing and dance about um, our fundraising and we are very fortunate that having been, uh, been going for 36 years um, they have used our services or they know of us and we've helped a relative so we do tick over really with donations so we've never had to do anything like this before and this was um, it's it's a whole new world to us to be quite honest we've only just uh, in the last i think five years gone on to internet banking rather than using checks for everything so uh, we're a little bit behind the times but but i think that you know we did amazingly on the day we needed to raise one of the things that we do is that we're the parent charity for the rainbow rooms which are four hospice rooms at west Barch community hospital so they're used for end of life care for patients not just cancer patients for any patients but uh, also symptom control for those you're in an end of life stage, but, but just needing a bit of help with the medication and to control the symptoms. We've been approached by the hospital, by one of the nurses to say that one of the things they'd really like would be the purchase of um, a cuddle bed, which is a single hospital bed uh, that will, the push of a button, they extend to a double bed, um, which to me sounds amazing. And I think that's what captured everybody's imagination and, and, and it's, it's a really emotive subject. You, you want to be with your relative, you want to be close to them. The Rainbow Rooms are a fantastic facility at the hospital. There's only four of them, but we wanted to, and we have given everything we can to support these rooms over the last 36 years. So we decided that we would start this project and apply to the Good Exchange for match funding and get the project going. Um, with regards to the double matched funding day, um, we only had, I think, a week uh, week's notice. So we were late to the party, very late to the party. Um, and we didn't do any flights. We didn't do anything other than using social media, which I have to say was looking at the stats. We don't get many followers on Facebook and Twitter, but we have got some followers. But on the day, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter were just fantastic. And... I'll just give you some stats on that. I didn't do any slides, I'm so sorry. We haven't got that uh, far in our technology yet. Uh, Facebook, it just, you look at the insights on it. We increased our Facebook views from the week before 569% uh, and a 1,450% increase comp compared to the week before of new page followers. Um, 2,659% increase on the post engagements. Those stats just overwhelmed us completely because we'd had probably 31 followers, 60 followers, but that was fantastic. On the day, what we'd done previously in the run-up is I'd done a couple of videos and put those on Facebook um, talking about us still operating and uh, throughout COVID. And then we heard that we were being, uh, we'd been selected as a finalist for the Double Match Funding Day. 
And that was it. So I put a couple of videos out and then we picked up on the social media and sent things out. And basically, I think we overwhelmed everybody with these posts and we tagged the Good Exchange, we tagged Green and Common Trust, we tagged everybody we could, um, possibly at every post to try and get people to do it. On the day of double match funding, we needed to raise £29,500. I'm just looking, we had 179 donors. We raised £16,945.86. We got gift aid, match funding, and £440 offline, which I have to say that was a fantastic facility, being able to add money that was donated offline, because we have a lot of our supporters who don't have technology. And I think that's something I'd say, please remember all the people that don't have the option of donating on the day. And if you have enough notice, um, get your word out, not just by social media, but also by flyers and posts and, and let the people that support you that don't have any technology, let them take part in it as well. Because community projects are that, they're community, they include everybody. Um, and it was a great thing. So the Green and Common Trust, adding that to it through the Good Exchange and being able to add donations that we'd received. We had people ringing up and saying they wanted to donate and I told them how to do it. They would send a check, a check in and the day that I received the money, um, I would then add it and on, on the uh, double match funding day once it had been banked. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity. It raised the money that we needed. We couldn't have done this without the Good Exchange and Green and Common Trust. Um, and I think Canva, that was one of the things that they um, recommended. We would be prepared for our next um, uh, project that we would run and we would think about it differently we would do a lot more we would do posts we would do slides we would do flyers um, but with the week's notice we were a little bit uh, caught short I think with that but we, we did it we reached our target people were still donating we ran out of match funding that was the other thing um, I think Charlotte mentioned that but we ran out of funding on the day and by 11 o'clock um, I think the double match funding had gone which was disappointing to a lot of people that had um, been holding on. And we told them not to donate until the Friday without realizing quite the support we were going to get. Um, it, it just overwhelmed us. And I think it overwhelmed everybody else and people were missing out and, and weren't very happy. We didn't have another project for them to donate to other than sending donations to Newbury Cancer Care um, for our general uh, projects that we have going, the usual things that we, we run. Um, but that's what we would do differently. We would be more aware, I think, of how quickly the donations were coming in um, because what we didn't want to do was put people off. We've got, uh, I've got a, a Zoom meeting next week um, to thank people for their, uh, an organisation for their donation on the day. They wanted it uh, double match fund and it wasn't and they weren't very happy, but um, hopefully I'll be able to talk to them and tell them we reached our target. Even with their donation, that was so important to us. Um, Sorry, I do feel quite emotional about this because I know that the, these two beds are on order um, and I'm just thinking about all the people that uh, are waiting for these beds um, to go into place and we couldn't have done it without the Good Exchange. So whatever you do, remember all of your supporters, um, use the facilities available, use your mentor, use Canva, just, just absolutely swamp social media because the message gets through, people share it, um, and getting the word out and spreading it is just the most important thing, I think, because without that, we wouldn't have had the support we did. Um, we've been really lucky over the years, but that day, we're still talking about it now, the 24th of July. It was just unbelievable. And I think without the support that we had from uh, the Good Exchange, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So it was a wonderful idea. All the charities involved were amazing. Um, there were 10 of us. and Congratulations, really, to the Good Exchange and the Greenham Trust. We've all benefited. Um, we can now help people to have an end of life that um, is one that is just a little bit more dignified and a bit more close comfort. And it helps symptoms. It helps so many different things. Facilities that we have available are all improved by the help we've received from Greenham and the Good Exchange. And... Thank you. Use what you can, use the facilities and use social media, but don't forget the people that don't have social media. And we'll, we'll try better on our next project. So thank you.